We are here with the head football coach of the normal community, Ironman, Jason Drenwitz. And coach, coming off a uh, loss to Chicago Mount Carmel, a, a season-ending loss. Your overall impressions, though, of your team efforts there on Saturday night? Well, I was, you know, as, as sad and disappointed as, as we are that the season has come to an end. Uh, I don't think I can really explain in words just how proud of our our players, our coaches, our seniors, our captains, uh, and how we played on uh, on Saturday night against an extremely talented team and uh, extremely well coached team. I just felt like we were playing our best football at the end of the year. Uh, our, our players played their rear ends off, gave it everything they had for four quarters from the beginning to the end, and really had us in a position. Uh, to win that game, and it would have been an epic win. It would have probably been a win that, that shocked the shocked the state of Illinois, but ultimately we came up a little bit short. But uh, the way we stayed positive, the way we responded to adversity, the way we lifted each other up, the way we uh, just kept going, putting our head down, going back to work, just a, really a credit to our, our players, our seniors, and our leaders. And again, uh, to win in those games, uh, your best players got to play, and our best players played really, really at a high level, and a bunch of other guys stepped up. So sad it's over, disappointed that it's over, but an overwhelming sense of pride in uh, our kids and our coaching staff and our, and our program. It was a back-and-forth first half, to say the least. Both teams putting a lot of touchdowns on the board. <laughs> But you talk about response. Every time Mount Carmel put the ball in the end zone, your team responded probably exactly how you wanted them to. Yeah, you know, all week in practice, we are kind of our mantra well, it had been, um, hey, we just got to be the best version of ourselves. We just got to put our head down no matter what happens and go back to work. On Monday at practice, we got to put our head down and go to work. Don't worry about all the negatives. And that's got to be our mindset on Saturday. If we score... Great, head down, go back to work. They score, head down, go back to work. Get a stop, head back, head down, go back to work. And our kids really, really did that. They got excited, but if you were in the moment on the sideline, our kids are sitting on the bench talking, calm, ready to do the next thing. Defensively, you know, commenting, hey, we're this close to, to getting a play and getting off the field. And I mean, I don't, I don't think you can really ask more from our kids and our coaching staff. Uh, the positivity everybody had, which we try to do all the time, uh, was was really special to see. And the only thing, the negative of it is that we didn't uh, we didn't find a way to, to come out on top and, and play another week and keep this group together. But uh, yeah, I mean, the last four or five weeks of the season, we just continued to get better and we're playing our best version of our. We were playing the best football that we had played all year and. Can't say enough about our kids and how they went about things. There were so many great offensive plays throughout the game for, for really both teams and and for the Ironmen. But one play that was so successful was was a little pitch play you ran mm -hmm. on the inside. Continually got mm -hmm. lots of yardage out of that. Talk about maybe the evolution of that play and mm -hmm. when that was all put in for you. Well, you know, on both sides of the ball, it goes back to the game plan that our coordinators put in. Derek does an amazing job putting in our defensive game plan and. Uh, week, week in, week out. Uh, same with Chris Messina offensively. And just based on how they played their front and how their defensive ends were aggressive in past situations, we felt like we could run them by, let guys go. In. And it, it really is just a middle screen. Um, and Chris saw it and we installed it on, we installed it on Monday and uh, it worked like a charm multiple times. It would have worked the first time, uh, but the kid had Caleb by the face mask. So, mm -hmm. uh, Credit to our players for executing it. Credit to Chris for calling it multiple times, going back to the well when it worked, and, and getting the ball and do, uh, you know, I mean, arguably the best player on the field on Friday night was Kaylin, Kaylin Taylor and our other guys and getting him the ball to make plays. So it, it worked out well. I was just proud of our kids how well we executed it. Yeah, talk about Kalen's game a little bit. I've seen a lot of Ironman football. I can't remember maybe a, a better individual performance from any player on the offensive side of the ball than what he showed on Saturday night. I think, you know, I've, I've been here a long time, and we've had a lot of great performances by players offensively, and and that's really what Kalen's been doing all, all year, uh, playing his best football in the biggest games and being a dominant offensive player, and he did it again uh, on Saturday night, you know, Playing at the stream high level, I mean, you can argue he's the best player on the field. I mean, obviously, you know, Jack Elliott is outstanding for Mount Carmel, but he was right there up with him. 
But again, Kalen played outstanding. It's credit to how he's prepared, how he's practiced, how he's got his body ready. But he can't do that without Kyle. He can't do that without the offensive line, who played really, really well. Kyle played outstanding. Marquand was outstanding. Guys on defense were giving it their all. So it was a very impressive performance by by Kalen, but also by a lot of our guys on both sides of the ball and special teams. So you relied on a lot of the passing game on Saturday night. It was difficult to run the ball between the tackles, so talk about maybe how that evolved in the game plan and, and what you looked at there. Well, we thought going into the game that they were going to give us probably a five-man box and try to take away our passing game to Marquand and, and Reed and those guys, and they did. I think early on we, we struggled a little bit running the ball, but as the game progressed we got better and better and better at running the football. But then we just felt like our best matchups were in 10 personnel with Kalen and then four wideouts trying to spread them out and make plays. And, um, you know, Marquand made a bunch of plays, Reed Hoover made plays, Kalen made plays in the passing game. Uh, uh, Kyle was, I thought, just, I mean, excellent all night long. And uh, we didn't give up a sack. Uh, against Mount Carmel, and that's credit to our own line, but also mm -hmm. credit to Kyle getting rid of the ball in time or making some things happen. And just in order to be in a game like that against a team like that, your 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 best guys got to play at a really high level, and they did. And our offensive line was physical and and and, and allowed us to open some holes and protect Kyle and throw the ball downfield. We probably missed on a couple that we would like to hit, but man, there were some big time plays by a lot of guys. Reed Hoover made some amazing clutch plays on fourth down, a touchdown catch. I mean. You could do, go down the line on uh, our guys offensively and defensively. And special teams, we other than one kickoff, we really handled special teams really, really well all night long. So, again, it just goes back to how we practice and the type of young men we have and, you know, their commitment to each other. And it was it was really fun, just sad, you know, disappointed that it's over because it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So. Yeah, last year ended in that 42-0 loss, and then when we look at this year, just a one-score game. How does this speak to not only the talent of this year's team, but just kind of the resilience and how they've even learned from last year as he brought a lot of players back? Well, I think uh, you know, that feeling at the end of last year was a, a very empty feel to get that far and then just get kind of dominated. And um, I think the work we put in in the offseason of how to handle adversity and breath work and winning the response and having things that we did, I think that paid off. Uh, it's a credit to our coaches and our players buying into all that stuff. And I just felt as the, as the year went on, not only did we get better in how we played football, we got better as teammates and our chemistry got better and our leadership got better and how we lifted each other up got better. And we were able to be in a position where, you know, we just were able to respond and no one was negative, no one was pointing fingers and they were just, hey, we got this, you're good. I mean, and that's what you got to have. When, when you're talented and you got good team chemistry and team culture and positive leadership, that typically lends itself to, to being, uh, allow you to be successful even in tough times. And even after the end of the game on Friday, I think, you know, the overwhelming sense of, uh, it, you know, it's an overwhelming sense of sadness and disappointment that we're done. But I felt like also our kids had a sense of they left it all out there on the field and gave it everything they got. And there was a sense of um, comfort from them. Sad and disappointed it's over, but feeling like, you know, they, you know, they did everything they could to put us in a position to win, which I think is 100% true. And it's definitely a, uh, it's, it's a different feeling than last year because last year you walk off the field and saying, you know, you got beat by a team that was a decent amount better than you. And this year it's a little different just because you competed with arguably one of the, be the, the best team in the state in 7A and one of the best teams in the state regardless of class. So it's a different disappointment because now you feel like had you found a way to win, you might have been able to take those next steps. But uh, that's just the way it goes. Just uh, really proud of our, our kids. We had amazing support up there. Uh, it, was a, it was a really special night. Just wish we could have finished it off with, a, with an epic win. Yeah, there's countless leaders on this team that are seniors and have just wrapped up their final high school game, but many of whom are going on to play collegiately. Um, can you kind of talk about the connection you built with them throughout their high school careers and now they're going on to college and kind of how that feels? Yeah, so I mean, we're talking about, I mean, when I look at the, the top of our leadership, it's our captains, it's it's Wynton Carlock, AJ Montoya, Craig Bennett, Kalen Taylor, Kyle Beatty, Braden Mazinowski, and Mark Wangari. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time together over four years, and it's been fun to watch them grow. 
uh, not just as players, but as young men, as leaders, as students, and them get to the level they're at. And I think they even showed a lot of maturity and growth this year as captains and leaders. And sometimes we as adults want them to be at this level of leadership and maturity, and we forget that they're 17 years old and 16 year old and don't have it figured out yet, and you're still trying to do those things. And, and those guys, and Jace Wilson, and Gavin Sheeler, and Griffin Zufa, I and mean, I could go on down the line of seniors that bought into the role and were leaders. But I do think, Zach, it's important if you want to develop a good culture and a good program, you have to find ways to give all players value in their program, regardless of whether or not they're starters. And I think we do that through the off season. We believe that to have a good team and a program and a culture, it can't just be about training for football, practicing for football, and playing the game. You have to spend other time together, whether it's team bonding, volunteering, going to other events together, and all those things that I feel like we do throughout the year lends itself uh, to developing good culture and having good leadership and having kids who are totally committed and bought in, even though they may only be on special teams or may not be on any of those things. And uh, it, I, I felt like that that was a key thing to what we've been doing here for a long time, and it, I felt like a lot of that stuff came to a head at the end of this year in a positive way. And, uh, those guys that are great leaders for us, we're going to greatly miss them, but can't wait to watch uh, hopefully all the success we're going to have in college and beyond as husbands, as fathers, as professionals, uh, in whatever endeavor they choose to go into. Yeah, you talk about these major events that aren't seen on the football field, like how important these team dinners are. Can you kind of talk about how, um, talk about the offensive lineman dinners? I was talking to Gabe Nega and he was like hosting one one week. Can you talk about how impactful those dinners are and just building that team chemistry? Well, I think you guys would agree the number one way to like an athlete's heart is food <laughs> and gear. Uh, you know, and if you can get them free food and gear, uh, you're going to get a, a lot of buy into that. And I think anytime you're fellowship together, eating is, is, immeasurable in the importance that it brings to the team and you know uh, we do a captain's dinner uh, we go out to dinner as captains on Monday nights have a captain's meeting we do that throughout the year uh, it's, it's called a lineman's dinner yes coach Logue it's not a lineman's dinner it's another team dinner it started as a lineman dinner but lineman parents host it and everybody goes which is awesome um, and then we have a team dinner on Friday night or Thursday night before the game where everybody's sitting around eating uh, and our, our, our FOF Booster Club has done an amazing job this year with doing fun little silly games and doing fun trivia and introducing people that's made that connectedness even better. Uh, on Saturday we had a, a team breakfast, team brunch before we left. I think anytime you can get your players hanging out together doing something other than football is immeasurably important to the success and culture and the relationships that you're hoping to try to develop throughout those four years because that's ultimately what they're going to remember. Uh, they're going to remember those times together. So um, I think those things have been outstanding. One of the many reasons I think Ironman football is special and things that need to continue and try to find ways to enhance and make them better. Um, I saw many um, Instagram posts or just all over social media where um, like some captions like started like without brothers and then like had this band of brothers that comes through football. How, how does that feel knowing that you are a part of this that builds this, this family? Well, I feel like I've just been a part of it that's tried to find my own ways that maintain and enhance what, you know, Coach uh, Venerable and Coach Temples and all those guys have done. And I think we've done a good job of it. And um, we always talk about that we, we want to be transformational, a, pro, a transformational program, not transactional, meaning our goal is to make better young men, better students, better all around athletes, and better football players. And if we do those things, uh, you'll have success transactionally on the football field on Friday nights or Saturdays. Um, I just feel real honored and blessed to be a part of it. We have amazing young men in our program. We have amazing families. We have outstanding coaches. We have tremendous support here in the building. Guys like you uh, making our players and program feel special. All the media that covers our games. I mean, it just, it just adds to the great experience that I think football is. On top of that, football is really hard because 90% of what you do is in the dark. You know, you're practicing, you're lifting, you're training to get a guaranteed nine games. Uh, or in other sports, you play a lot more than that. So I think that doing hard things together uh, builds that brotherhood, builds that relationship. Um, and hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's an experience our players are getting out of our program that's more than just about winning, winning football games. Uh, I think it is, and I know it's more 
than that to me. I'm, I'm sad the season's over. Sad that we lost, but more importantly, I'm sad and disappointed that uh, we're not out of practice, you know, with our guys, talking to them, coaching them, hanging out in the locker room. That's the stuff that, that you truly miss, and I think it's what makes coaching any sport really special. So in 2024, 2025, does off-season exist for a football coach? What's the next step for you? Does break have anywhere in the equation for you now as we go forward over the next couple so, months? So I, you know, I think football, for the most part, for the head coach, is a year-round thing. Um, you know, the, the season ends, and you know, you take the couple days to, um, you know, kind of sulk and feel sorry for yourself and kind of reminisce and reflect. But then that's right into. Uh, we got to get our home. We got to get equipment collected and turned in. Uh, we got to get all sent in for reconditioning. We got to inventory our stuff. We have to make sure we've got all our postseason accolades put in for all state, for all conference. Um, uh, pretty soon, you got to start doing budget stuff and fundraising for uh, the following year. You got to start looking at your equipment that you need for the next year. Um, you got to inventory your jerseys. You got to hang those things. You got to clean your locker room. You got to get all your equipment stored and put away. Uh, there really is no. Uh, there really is no end for, uh, at least for me. Uh, I think the players do get a, and the players will get a break. Uh, we'll start our off season back up at the beginning of January. When we come back, uh, we give everybody. I um, mean, we got to we got to plan it. We have a team meeting. We got to vote on awards. Um, we got to do that. Uh, we have to collect. It. We uh, we do a senior meeting in the locker room this week where we do some things that just the seniors do. Um, I do uh, exit surveys with all our coaches. Uh, we have post-season meetings and then I do exit surveys and post it with every player in our program. So that's stuff that will continue and I'll be doing here pretty soon. So it's a lot of work, but I think all that stuff is extremely important to sit down and try to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with every player in your program and, and, and be able to have an honest conversation. They'll all fill out an exit survey based on how they feel about the program anonymously. Um, and I just, it's a good idea to get an idea where the, you know, and where you're, where you're at culturally and relationship-wise. Typically, it's been really, really good, but yeah. So there's lots of stuff, <laughs> lots of stuff to do. Wow. Um, so, but you know, sometimes it's like peaceful work. You know, if you're out in the locker room, just going through stuff, turn on a podcast or music by yourself. It just kind of, you know, kind of helps you, you know, close the book on that year. Um, unfortunately, you know. Well, Coach, uh, Zach and I just want to tell you how much we appreciate covering your team here in the 2024 season, how much fun it was, and just watching the team grow from week one all the way to what happened on, on Saturday. So you've been a pleasure to work with. Um, we're going to lose Zach, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, for uh, He'll be doing basketball this year, but uh, losing him uh, for color. So, But I'm looking forward to the 2025 season, and you've just been a pleasure to work with, so we really appreciate you. Yeah, and I, I just appreciate you guys, all the different things that you've done this year have just been outstanding. I mean, and making our program and our players feel special and unique and doing it at such a high level and taking time out of your day to support our program is, is really amazing and something I hope in general keeps doing, and I know Zach will go on and do uh, really great things uh, from beyond, but I can't thank you guys enough, so appreciate you. Well, Coach, uh, August 2025, we'll be here before you know it, so we appreciate your time. Awesome. Thank you, guys.